smile and look fair, smooth, deceive and cog, and must be held a rancorous enemy. Cannot a plain man live and think no harm, but does his simple truth must be abused with... The biggest celebrity to hit the stage at MTC since Keanu Reeves a couple of years ago is set to make his debut. William Hurt will star in the theatrical juggernaut Richard III. Yesterday, the cast, including Hurt, gave us a preview of what to expect. Here's Global's Lisa Best. Cannot a plain man live and think no harm, but does his simple truth must be abused with silken, sly, insinuating jacks? To who in all this present speaks, Your Grace? To thee that has no honesty nor grace. When have I injured thee, when done thee wrong, or thee, or thee, or any of your faction, a plague upon you all? 53-year-old William Hurt has slipped seemingly effortlessly into the Machiavellian mindset of Richard III. Like any good actor, he credits the rehearsal process. To me, it gives you, it gives you as an actor, the same thing that having nine months does as a woman having a baby. One of the things was gladness about working with, for instance, Carolyn, when she was running the, the when she was leading us in uh, exercises and things like that, feeling once again that the process of being an actor was was there and was rooted to your um, your natural process. You envy my advancement and my friends. God grant we never may have need of you. Meantime, God grant we have need of you. In MTC's final production of the season, William Hurt plays opposite a bevy of great local and international talent, including Sean Devine, who believes the Bard's classic tale parallels recent events. More than uh, any other Shakespeare experience I had, this one um, was not really difficult at all to make relevant. If I look at one aspect of it, you know, the abuses of power and how much hypocrisy can be in a, in a society, I just, you know, not that I enjoyed it, but reading the newspaper's headlines as I rehearsed and coming in and saying, wow, I'm living you know, in a very parallel world to what a lot of, you know, poor people are living right now. It was, I don't want to say a joy, but it was definitely a, an, a harmonious convergence of, of art and my reality. A season closer at Manitoba Theatre Center's main stage. To who in all this present speaks your grace? To thee, that has no honesty nor grace. When have I injured thee, when done thee wrong? Or thee, or thee, or any of your faction, a plague upon you all. His royal person cannot be quiet, scarce a breathing while, but you must trouble him yes. with nude complaints. You're seeing William Hurt, Oscar-winning William Hurt, will star in William Shakespeare's Richard III. This innovative production uses different time periods to present Shakespeare's timeless political thriller. Richard III is a dark tale of a corrupt man who gains power through murder and betrayal, a theme that remains chillingly relevant, relevant to today's audiences. The play, directed by Guy Sprung, features a strong cast of local and internationally acclaimed actors, including Benjamin Beauchemin, Eric Davis, Sean Devine, and Rob Patterson. William Hurt won an Oscar for 1985 Kiss of the Spider Woman. Richard III opens Thursday night and runs until May the 10th. Should be a good one. And MTC ends their season with Shakespeare's classic Richard III. Director Guy Sprung catapults the Bard's play into the 21st century with innovative use of costumes, sets, and television. What does remain is the bloody trail of murder and betrayal by Richard, which makes the play so very timely. The 19-member ensemble cast had local and international actors, including Oscar award-winning William Hurt, rehearsing intensely for six weeks. Winnipegger Rob Patterson has enjoyed the challenge of his character, Lord Stanley. It's a, it's, a, it's a very contained man, Lord Stanley is, because he's a military man all his life. And he's a very loyal man to the crown, to the idea of kingdom and, and king and the king. Uh, and what's great is in the story, he struggles with that, his need to be loyal to the king, and his sense that there's a cancer in the White House, Mr. President, I mean, <laughs> which is, you know, originally the third is killing people and um, uh, so it's a great struggle to, to play with. Carolyn Goulet plays the role of Queen Elizabeth, a woman with power only to see it crumble when the men she has aligned herself with are murdered by the treacherous Richard III. The character that I play, she has power because of the way that she is connected with male figures. She has power because she's the wife of a king. She has power because she's the mother of to, uh, of a child who was supposed to be king after my husband dies. Um, 
and so i think she very much her power is related to her um, marriage and her ability to bear healthy children um, so i think that's a very much i think that these days women can be powerful without necessarily aligning themselves with males whereas this woman has her father is killed her brothers are killed her sons by her first marriage are killed uh, her husband from her first marriage is killed her husband the king dies her princes in the tower are murdered and at that point she doesn't have any power left except that she's the mother of a, she has a, one daughter left and she manages to make that daughter queen of england his grace speaks cheerfully god grant him hell did you confer with him madam we did he desires to make atonement between the duke of gloucester and your brother and between your son and prime minister hastings <laughs> and sent to warn them to his royal presence i think william hurt is uh worth the price of admission honestly he's uh, oh he's so intriguing it's such a it's such an intriguing take on the character and as i say he's an incredibly inventive and creative guy who works on this 24 hours a day I mean, it's, and he's and, he, and he's a pleasant fellow too for what it's worth <laughs> very nice guy you <laughs> not the me my lord hastings late in prison she may my lord she may look at it may she not she may do more so than denying that. She may help you to many fair performance and then deny <laughs> her aiding hand therein and lay those honors on your high desert. But may she not, she may. Uh... I find that it's a great privilege to work on this piece because of the resonances to today. You can't watch this piece without having in your gut all of those images that we're all watching on television about war, about power struggle, about violence, about regime change. All of those things are very much about what this play is about. It's a nasty nasty world that we're entering into and when you place it in this context and you see it in this light with this interpretation you have to ask yourself how much have we changed very seldom do you uh, get the opportunity to have your your deepest you know abilities met and challenged and uh, recognized um, I don't think we can be recognized as artists if we don't have time to to consider our work and in the, a short order of world uh, we don't you know rebel against the short circuiting of you know a, a very important process of consideration and the way that we can bring those considerations to the play you know manifest them um, all of these remarks, you know, I mean, I get to be in a room where I get to hear people talk, and that means I can be inspired, and that means I can share, and I can listen, and I can, I can, I can be better. It makes me better. And, um, and Shakespeare is, is, uh, brilliant. He rocks. Um, he rocks. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the quote, man. <laughs> Send us. I come to prepare. How was Winnipeg? Oh, it was great, thanks. It's great. Don't people live longer here? Absolutely. That's what I thought. They get preserved. I, I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Everyone loves a star. And the artistic director of Manitoba Theatre Center knows it. I think if we look at the last week of May as a really great opportunity to go to London, England, Stephen Shipper spends a lot of his time on the road, getting to know the people who can supply his theater with the big names and Broadway hits. We're seeing that more people do recognize the name, the Manitoba Theater Center, and we ourselves are working more at developing relationships that might see Hollywood stars uh, share their art, grace our stage. In the past decade, three Hollywood names have appeared on MTC's Playbill. Keanu Reeves as Hamlet, Judd Hirsch as Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman, and now Oscar Award winner William Hurt as Richard III. To who in all this presence speaks, Your Grace? To thee, that has no honesty nor grace. When have I injured thee, when done thee wrong, or thee, or thee, or any real faction, a plague upon you all. All right, so as well, that was two tickets for the performance of Richard III. And that means big money at the box office. That's despite some stipulations that could hurt ticket sales. 
like Hurt's refusal to have his name on the marquee. He doesn't grant one-on-one -on -one interviews, and MTC didn't even formally publicize his presence. Thank you. Manitoba Theatre Centre set sales records this season, capturing 20,000 subscribers between its main stage and warehouse space. No other regional theatre in Canada can boast such a following. I don't think it's the star power. I, I, I think that uh, you'd be going up and down as far as uh, subscriptions and, and ticket sales because when they're not there, people wouldn't come. Kevin Prokosh is the theatre critic for the Winnipeg Free Press. All of a sudden, MTC um, has earned the uh, name center again. For the longest time, uh, that was, uh, you know, an overstatement, but not anymore. I mean, uh, all of a sudden, the theater has a lot of entry points. You know, you have uh, no, not only two theaters, but you have the Fringe Festival, which literally lets people in the back door of MTC. People who would be too afraid to walk in the front door can literally come in the back door to uh, see a fringe play at the main, on the main stage. When uh, I was appointed artistic director in 1989, it was one of those fire the coach cases where the previous year we had incurred a $430,000 deficit uh, for a $330,000 accumulated deficit. So we worked to eliminate that deficit, but all the while we were working to create really great art. Shipper and his crew look for new ways to pass the theater bug. They lowered the median age of MTC's audience by creating a subscriber base made up entirely of high school students. They created more flexible subscriber packages where patrons can mix and match more popular main stage items with edgier warehouse shows. And according to Kevin Prokosh, Shipper decided to play Winnipeg's trump card, isolation. Well, what happens is that uh, when a, uh, a, a show hits big, there's talk about tours. Well, those tours are not uh, planning to come to Winnipeg. And all of a sudden, uh, they'll, they'll allow a, a city like Winnipeg to, to, uh, to show it at MTC, where in Toronto, at Cannes Stage, they won't be able to get the rights for many years. So they, they look at the map and say, oh, you're north of North Dakota? Oh, you can have it then. All this means more bottoms in theater seats. But Shipper still isn't selling star power short. He's giving stars what they want if it results in a better product. Just ask William Hurt why he chose to work in Winnipeg. Um, because uh, we had six weeks of rehearsal. That was, that's the answer to the question. To me, it gives you, it gives you as an actor, the same thing that having nine months does as a woman having a baby. It's enough, t it's enough time <laughs> to have a baby. <laughs> so, Shipper will continue to shoot for the stars. Hey. Dear Stephen, thank you for your letter and for all the nice things you say. And I'd love, capital L-O-V-E, to direct The Dresser in Manitoba. Ronald Harwood just won an Academy Award for his screenplay, The Pianist. Now he's coming to Manitoba Theatre Centre in 2004. TV icon Stacey Keach may also be on his way. And Shipper is now working with a theatre in California in the hopes of developing a celebrity pipeline straight to Winnipeg. Barbara Brunzel. CBC News, Winnipeg.